In this video, Jeremy Evans of a lifelong hunter that had a nearly fatal encounter with a grizzly. Evans persisted and fought for his life with a ferocity that not many people possess. Sometimes we encounter a survival story that is so horrific, surprising, and improbable that we wonder, how did they do it? Welcome to Wild Assault. Jeremy Evans had been a hunter all of his life and was 32 years old. In August 2017, he had been hunting for 17 years at that point in his life. Evans was more familiar with nature than most people. His hunting expeditions frequently took him far from the majority of other hunters, deep into the forest of Canada's Rockies in Alberta. For Evans, going hunting was an annual event to look forward to. He was able to live a more primitive lifestyle thanks to something that removed him from the contemporary world. Every year, Evans would spend roughly two months running right in the woods in the center of nature in search of deer, elk, moose, and sheep. He hunted with a bow frequently, and as you could have guessed by now, he never ran out of luck. On August 24, 2017, around midnight, Jeremy Evans left his Calgary, Alberta, home. To be ready for the start of rim hunting season, he was going on a three-night reconnaissance excursion. Evans said his wife Joyce and their six-month-old daughter farewell after packing his bag and mountain bike into his truck. The man drove almost three hours from his house to the location where he parked his truck. He then began moving more into the remote mountains of Alberta by moving down the path. The Canadian Rocky Mountains include the Alberta Rockies. These are rough, chilly, rainy mountains with more glaciers than their American counterparts in soggy soil. The Alberta Rockies are among the most beautiful locations on Earth because of its breathtaking mountains, scenery that seems like it belongs in a fairy tale, majestic peaks and alpine meadows, turquoise lakes, waterfalls, and a variety of exotic animals. Also, hunters adore Alberta's mountains. Jeremy Evans was certain of the exact location where he intended to search for sheep. He pedaled down the route till he was around 7 to 9 kilometers from his base camp. Hunters didn't frequently travel thus far into the wilderness, let alone on a bike. Evans didn't give up on his idea, either. He then rode his bike into a canyon in the back. The Crying Canyon was the ominous moniker given to the ominously steep and lonely gorge, yet where some perceived risk. Jeremy Evans spotted the ideal chance for some successful sheep hunting. Jeremy Evans arrived in the canyon and noticed a few sheep out in the distance. He came to a stop, pulled out his binoculars, and began observing the unwary creatures. He remained there and observed the sheep for more than 10 minutes before lowering his binoculars and moving. But when he lowered the binoculars, Evans noticed something that he knew would cause trouble. That was it. Just a little brown object moving in his direction. The man recognized the bear cub right away. A protective mother bear is always present where there is a bear cub. Evans experienced a feeling of impending catastrophe, yet he was unable to give up. Not right now. The man gently reached into his rucksack to get out his bear spray rather than giving in to terror. Even if he had able to get the bear spray, which was concealed deep within his rucksack, there was not enough time. That was useless to you anyhow. A little crack may be heard coming from behind. The man saw something dreadful when he turned to gaze to his right. There it was, a grizzly cell charging towards him while acting irrationally. The grizzly bear was only a few feet away. It moved quickly toward Evans and lifted one paw. If Evans had any questions about the grizzly's motivation, which is exceedingly unlikely they were no longer present, the bear had an open mouth. Its fierce canines are clearly seen. The rucksack and one of Evans' hands were both taken by the bear, which then used its enormous jaws to tear them apart. They continued to struggle until the bike was flung off and the bear retreated about 30 feet. Evans fumbled with his pistol before loading it. The bear appeared to go. But the conflict was far from done. During a short period of time, the bear charged once again. He needed to act dead. Everyone agreed that it was the wisest course of action in the case of a grisly assault. To try whether the saddle would leave him alone, he curled up like a fetal posture. But the bear attacked Evans' face as he lay there on his left side. 
With a large grizzly bear gnawing on his face, Evans couldn't help but realize that trying to pretend dead was a pretty damn difficult task. He then started fighting at that point. He began striking the animal and prodding its eyes and ears. He put his hand inside the bear's mouth and inserted his fingers into her nostrils. The bear was in anguish as he gagged and puked. Yet he persisted in grabbing, twisting, and pulling until the bear eventually gave up and screamed. The sound accelerated, slicing through the undergrowth and upward towards the mountains. Evans ceased speaking and hastened to get his rucksack. His left part of his face had basically been pulled off in pieces. Jeremy Evans began loading his rifle with ammunition, but something happened as he was doing so. The bear crept up behind him, unseen by him. It grabbed Jeremy Evans' head and pulled him backward up the mountainside. He thought he was going to pass away, and curiously, he was all right with it. But the bear changed its posture. Evans collapsed on the ground, and something occurred to his body. The guy could now move his arms again with this new strength. Evans' body was cast in a foreboding shadow by the bear. The bear was suddenly caught by the man, who then tightly encircled the beast's neck with his legs. The bear sprinted off, painfully sweet. As splayed downward, Jeremy Evans looked for his bag. He attempted to load his rifle, but he was unable to locate his clip. He had severe wounds. Even when he brought the gun to his head in an attempt to kill himself, nothing happened. Evans saw it as a signal to continue. He seized every scrap of skin he could find and adhered it to his skull. His body was missing large portions of it. In the woods, he was by himself. He was passing away. Still, he persevered and persisted. He eventually came upon an outfitter's camp. He combed the area quickly in search of a radio or a phone. He failed to locate any. Seven kilometers of crawling separated Jeremy Evans from his pickup. Maybe more dead than alive, he was. However, he continued driving for another 13 miles until he came upon a family-run lodge. The resort's largest owner was an experienced helicopter pilot and volunteered to transport Evans to the hospital while he waited for the chopper to arrive. Evans made an effort to go fishing. Naturally, the lodge's residents forbade him from doing that. Jeremy Evans spent five weeks at the hospital. Doctors initially believed he would pass away from his injuries sometime during his first night in the hospital. He refused. Evans made it. And barely two days after leaving the hospital, he was able to go hunting. Just seven weeks after the incident, and with extremely little injuries, he returned to work. After the attack, Jeremy Evans wrote a book outlining what happened on August 24, 2017, as well as the lessons he has subsequently learned.